Hockey is tonight. The Penn Quakers host the St. Joseph's University Hawks in a City 6 ACHA Division 2 matchup. Hi, everybody. Tom Wilms here. Thanks so much for joining us uh, as the warm-up is about to begin. It's going to be about 10 minutes of warm-up and then about five minutes you know, of announcing the lineups and things like that. So we wanted to get on the air and say hello to you, just you know, so you didn't think we forgot about you. We're looking forward to calling Penn Hockey all season long here on the Sports Fan Base Network. 11 home games right here on SFBN. What a year it was last year for the Quakers. 18-1 and one overall in the regular season. 13-1 and one in the Colonial States Collegiate Hockey Conference. Regular season and the playoff champions defeating Millersville in the final. And uh, they went into brand new territory for a team coming out of, of the Colonial. In the ACHA D2 Southeast Regional, as the number 13 seed, they beat number 8 Michigan 4-3, to three, but suffered a loss to number 3 Kentucky as they were just that close to making it to the national tournament for the very first time. St. Joe's, they're out of the ACC. Last year, an 11-4 and a 2 overall record in the regular season. They were 8-0-1 oh, in the ACCHL's Capital Division, but... They suffered an absolutely shocking 7 to nothing loss to the number 8 seed, Elon College. So they are looking to regroup again after a just a weird finish to last year's schedule. We're going to take a break as we look forward to the uh, announcements and all that fun stuff. They're going to do the warm-up for the next 10 minutes or so. As you can see St. Joe's on the far side. Very unique uh, building, by the way, here at Class of 23 Arena. Usually you either have the penalty boxes on one side or everything on one side here it's very strange right below us on the near side will be Penn's bench and their penalty box and I believe also St. Joe's penalty box while St. Joe's bench is on the other side next to the official scores table that's a little bit offset from the Zamboni door so it's again it's a very interesting facility that it's been around since the late 60s again back in the day when University of Pennsylvania had an NCAA varsity team this place at this point, probably holds about 1,100. I think originally they had more seats in the behind the goals, and it was up to about 1,200. But right now, seats about 1,100. And uh, a lot of the facility is relatively new. The lights have just been redone in the last five years. The, uh, the condensation system has been redone as well. So, it's uh, again, I've always loved calling games at this facility, whether it be I'm – in my infancy of broadcasting, whether it be the Penn Quakers back in the day, the Philadelphia Rebels of the North American Hockey League played here for one season. So I love calling games here, great sight lines, and again, you're really going to enjoy the broadcasts this year. Again, Penn Hockey here on the Sports Fan Base Network here in the 2023-2024 season. We'll take a break and come back uh, just in time for the opening puck drop in about 10 to 15 minutes or so. So stick around, watch the warm-up, and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. Once again, live from the Class of 23 Arena in Philadelphia. About to get started with the ACHA Division II season as the Penn Quakers host the St. Joe's Hawks. Tom Wilms here again. Thanks so much for joining us. As we're bringing the goalkeeping matchup first for the visiting St. Joe's Hawks, it'll be Christopher Schofield, the Darien, Connecticut native, his second year with the Hawks. And for the uh, Penn Quakers, the sophomore out of Shelburne, Vermont, Jack Averill, out of Champlain Valley High School up in Vermont. Quakers are led by head coach Alec Artoski, former Drexel player, so he played this very rink for the Dragons. While John Tarantino is the head coach for St. Joe's, a St. Joe's graduate of 2019, and a former at least one game professional player playing for the Delaware Thunder in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. It is St. Joe's in the red. They'll be going left to right on your screen. Penn is in the white going right to left. A two referee, two linesman system. 20 minutes up on the board and we are just about ready to roll. Puck is down and we're underway for the ACHA season. Tom Wilms here again. Thanks so much for joining us. Mark Tarazzi clears it up ahead but controlled here by St. Joe's. Shane Wilson controlling. Gets it across the far side. Back to the near side for Kyle Gross. Tries the one-touch pass. Intercepted by Chris Bugliosi. Bugliosi with a nice little cut move. Moves into the outside. Knocked off his stick, but followed up by Calvin Oliferov. Oliferov to the far side now. Where it's collected by Abraham. Calling for Bugliosi. Trying to get a lean to shoot. Fires and a pad saved by Schofield. 30 seconds in. We get our first shot on goal. St. Joe's putting on the press. Rather, it's Penn putting on the press. But now St. Joe's breaking out the other way. As here comes Neil K Kadahi. He gets bumped from behind. The legal check there by Tarazi, and he ang angles it up ahead here to the near side. Shot comes in, pad save this time by Schofield. Again on the opportunity by Ethan Abraham. Abraham to the corner. Now to the half boards. It's controlled by Liferov. Back to Abraham. Throws it to the slot. Goes all the way back to the point. Wrist shot comes in, deflected. And it goes to the far side corner. Early pressure by the Quakers. One minute in, already a couple of shots on goal. Spencer Tuey throws it back to the point, and uh, coming off the bench to grab it is Jacob Kian. But he'll have to uh, play it in the neutral zone. Tips it up ahead to Zakian, his brother. Now turned here, Peter Borman up the far side. Poked up ahead by Eric Ford. A little bit of an overscape, but Ford helps him out. Cuts to the outside. Tries the shot, but it goes wide of the cage. And controlled here by Penn. Around the near side it comes. And a big collision on the near side is wiping out as Eric Ford. Taken back here by the Hawks. Shot comes in. Pad save. Rebound. Lose another big save. The glove goes flying of Jack Averill. And the net off its pegs as well. That'll stop play. 18-23 to go in the first period. We remain scoreless. Again, Averill wasn't all that busy in the first uh, minute 30, but the last 10 seconds, he made a couple of real key saves. Draw will be to the left of Averill. Corey Long will take it for St. Joe's. Wins it on back. Lifted on deep here by Chris Hunter. Hunter to the corner looking for Ford. Ford helps around. Thrown out in front and a shot and a save by Averill on the one-timer by Long. Nice setup from St. Joe's. Both teams have had some offenses. Here comes uh, Drew Vraman. Vraman up ahead to the far side. Pass a little bit too strong for uh, Trevor Kenji. Trying to bat it away was Eric Ford. Still battling on the near side. Boards against three Quakers. Still doing a pretty good job, and it can't quite clear it out as that's blocked. Move up ahead by Shane Better towards the corner, but it's controlled by Chris Hunter. Hunter back behind the cage, where it's grabbed by Roughgarden. Frederick Roughgarden with a bank, but it's intercepted by Griffin Bond. Bond back towards the point, kicks off the leg of Better. Catches up to it, throws it to the cage, but into the chest of Schofield, and that will stop play. 17-38 left to go here in the first period. Again, not even three minutes in. We've already seen six shots on goal. Both teams getting line changes as the draw will be to the right of Schofield. Calvin Oliferov, the senior out of Medford, New Jersey, will take the draw for the Quakers. Looks like it's Nick Fiore taking it for the Hawks, and it's tipped out to the neutral zone. Good recovery by Bugliosi. Back down for Amali. Aiden Amali up the near side, tipped off the stick of Oliferov. And controlled here by St. Joe's. Things kind of settling down for a couple of seconds at least as Brazil gets it up ahead. Lifted across, but it's intercepted by Tarazzi. And he'll throw it to the neutral zone. Well, usually you get opening night jitters, but I think at least offensively, both teams were rearing to go. Again, in a late night uh, start time at 9 p.m. No, we're not in the mountain time zone. 
But that is pretty typical in the ACHA. You get the ice time when you can get it. It's Zine O'Rourke. We'll have it tipped out to the neutral zone by Fiore. Grabbed there by Mark Tarazzi. He gets shouldered on the play. And it comes out now for Abraham. Ethan Abraham, two on two. Neat little drop pass. He's in. Goes to the forehand and a save. Rebound still sitting there. Backhanded wide by Abraham. Big opportunities from Oliferov and Abraham, but they would not go. So St. Joe's controls back behind their own cage. This is Nick Fiore out to the neutral zone. Lifted outside here for Kyle Gross, and we'll have our first penalty of the game. Looks like it might be an interference call against Oliferov. We'll wait to see what the decision is. Unfortunately, the, at least for our purposes, the scores table's on the far side. It is an interference call. So into the box goes Oliferov. Former Aston Nordique at the 18U AA level. So St. Joe's goes on the power play. And he'll get the draw deep inside Penn territory. Chasing in here is Corey Long. Long tries to wind it around to the point. Kept alive there. Tipped across now for Fiore. Fiore with the wrister and a stand-up block right in front of him by Drew Muraman. Now we go the other way shorthanded. Trying to chase it down is Tiui. Tiui gets in and he's free. Goes to the backhand and he scores! Spencer Tiui! A shorthanded goal. And with 16-10 to go in the first, it's 1-0 Quakers. He took off like a shot to just to catch up to it. But then found his way in all alone, went to his backhand and made no mistake. A 1-0 lead for Penn. And again, a shorthanded goal. Good news for St. Joe's as they're still on the power play, but now breaking in is Tioe again. But controlled here by Danny Flagg. So now St. Joe's can settle it down four minutes in. 1.30 remaining in the Hawk power play. Kadahi might can't, can't quite get it deep into the zone, so it's cleared on goal. Schofield has it stuck in his body. Ford leaves it aside here for Chris Hunter. Hunter out of Philadelphia HC at the 18U AAA level. Moving here, Zeno Rourke trying to move into the zone. Almost pulled himself offside. Controlled here by Ethan Abraham, and he'll clear. Comes in on goal, swallowed up by Schofield, and he will cover. 15-29 left to go in the first period, 102 remaining in the St. Joe's power play. It's 1-0 Penn. One thing that will be an adjustment for a lot of the first years of freshmen, if you will, is the change of rule set. And from the youth level to the ACHA rules, much more in line with the NCAA and closer to NHL hockey. At the 18U level in some leagues, you can't even clear the puck. It would be called icing. But here in the ACHA, you can. Again, much closer to the NCAA and NHL rule set that we're all used to. Nice cut to the middle here by uh, Kadahi. Now a pass up ahead, moving in here to the outside, Masanova. Masanova tries to pass it across, but it's deflected back behind the cage by Amali. Amali races to the near side, has some room to move up. Five minutes into the contest, one nothing Penn. They dump it in deep. With 30 seconds to go in the St. Joe's power play. This is intercepted by Kian. Jacob Kian trying to fight through a quadruple team. Goes back behind the cage. Tries to bank it out in front, but it's blocked. He gets some help from Ethan Abraham. Kian is on top of the puck. Three Hawks in the vicinity. Referee telling him to move it. Good work here by Abraham. Backhands it out in front, and it goes all the way through the crease. Kian trying to get it back to his point for Aiden Amali. Amali to the near side for Tarazi. And he'll settle it down and then clear it down, and that'll be enough of the St. Joe's power play that did not work out very well for the Hawks. No shots, and they gave up a shorty. So back to five-on-five five play. As it's cleared to the neutral zone, and a big hit thrown there. It's going to be a penalty against St. Joe's as Danny Flagg wiped out Shane Better. It'll be a roughing call, and now it'll be a power play opportunity for the Penn Quakers. We'll take a quick look at the goal. As again, you can see it clear the other way. And then that nice move to get out in front goes right to the backhand and off the post and in. So power play begins for Penn, already leading one to nothing. Back to the point it goes. Here's Bill Houston to the near side for Bugliosi. Bugliosi up ahead here for Aliferov, and he'll wind it around back behind the cage. 
Trying to race over is Ryan Manns. He gets his stick lifted, runs into traffic. It's thrown on Cage from the point by Mark Tarazzi, and it's directed away to the corner now for a lift off. Back to the point, wrist shot comes in. That sneaks through traffic and a save by Schofield, who has been very busy making seven saves so far. Back behind the net, here's Abraham. Looks out in front with all the way back to the point for Houston. Houston goes wide. Back up ahead now for Abraham. Abraham looking for a cutter out in front. Deflection, score! Brilliant pass to Calvin Oliferov. It's his first of the season. And with 13.29 to go in the first, it's 2-0 Quakers. One shot on goal registered during the power play and one goal. So a shorty and a power play goal for the Quakers, and they are off to a very quick start, not even seven minutes in. Puck is down and controlled here by Zach Kian. Up now for Tio. He pass up ahead. Shot comes in. That flutters wide by Jacob Kian. Trying to get it back out in front. The clear is intercepted by Spencer Tio. He tries to find his way th through, but it's taken over by Pant, by St. Joe's rather. Far side, Caden Balladet. Dumps it in deep. The back behind the cage, trying to reach for it is Kevin Shen. Thrown out in front, backhanded away by Amali. All the way back to the point now for Hirschman. Hirschman gets it knocked away. Breakaway coming from Spencer Tiui. Tiui moves in, goes to the backhand, forehand, and a poke check by Schofield. Still has possession, though. Moves out in front to the slot on his backhand, and he's decked. Big check there by Christian Masanova. Turnaround shot. That's an easy stick save, and swallowing up is Schofield after the wrister by Zach Kian. Play stopped with 12.45 left to go in the first. A 2-0 lead for the Penn Quakers. Spencer Tuey and Calvin Oliferoff, your goal scorers. Face off to the left, Schofield. Puck down and chopped up ahead by the Hawks. Big shoulder barge by Griffin Bond. And thrown back into the zone in an offside play. Well, looks like they've touched up. And now an intercept towards the corners. Here comes Shane Better. Sharp angle try off the mask of Schofield. Goes back to the point. Houston settles it down. Throws it to the cage. Pad save. Rebound controlled here by Roughgarden. And he'll just try to angle out to the neutral zone. Kicked by R Raman. Up ahead now for Better. Winds it around behind the cage. Chris Hunter controls. Hunter, the touch pass, but it's intercepted by Better. Bounces it on cage. And a save by Schofield. Stops play with 12.07. Left to go in the first period. So far, a dominating performance by the Penn Quakers. So we take a look at Penn's second goal. And just look at this setup. As it gets to the corner, again, that little bit of space was enough. Just the touch, didn't have to do too much with it. He just tapped it home. Chris Bugliosi will take the draw out of the Kent School. In his freshman year for as a Quaker. He doesn't know where it is after he actually won the draw off himself. Taken here by Kadahi. Now back behind the cage. Peter Borman wise it around. One time pass is blocked. And followed up though by Borman again. Borman gains the line and dumps it in deep and around. Behind the cage, Averill. Leaves it aside here for Tarazi. Tarazi winds it here for Oliferov. Oliferov banks it up the boards. Good stick check getting in the way. That one was Kadahi. But it's taken down to the corner. Tarazi. Tarazi, big shoulder there. Actually getting the worst of it was Trevor Stimmel. And so he backhanded towards the line, but not out by Ethan Abraham. Helping out is Aiden Amali. Out towards the point. Controlled here by Gross. Gross just throws it in deep. Here's a Molly, shoulder on him, but turned around to the near side boards. Pinch in by Shane Wilson. Rather, this is Neil Kadahi trying to get free. Kadahi swings it to the corner. Good pressure put on by St. Joe's, but everything to the outside. Big check by Tarazi. Rather, that was Aiden Amali. And this will go to the neutral zone. No, kept alive. Pitch forked up ahead. This will skitter out to the neutral zone. Grabbed here by Oliferov. Overskates the puck after the stick check by Borman. Grabbed here by Kadahi. He'll break in, and it'll be just dumped in, and St. Joe's needs a change. So uh, able to get a little bit of pressure, but nothing towards the goal. This will come all the way down, and icing called against Penn. And play is stopped. And every team does it. They try to make the late line change. But the officials usually do a really good job of saying, you know what, it's not necessarily when the whistle blows that you're not allowed to change. It's once the icing is initiated that it's delayed 
you cannot make the change. Every coach tries it. Every team does it. Every team gets caught. 10.46 to go in the first. That's another change from youth hockey, by the way. Can't change on icings. Nick Fiore takes the draw. Philadelphia native for the Hawks. Play for the Delaware Junior Blue Hens at the 18U level. And it looks like there's explanations abound. Not exactly sure why. Again, I understand that Penn wanted an explanation why they couldn't make certain uh, changes on the ice. I think St. Joe's might be asking, well, why were they allowed to make any changes? As we take a look at John Tarantino. St. Joe's grad back in 2019. Fiore takes the draw against Bugliosi. Controlled here to the corner. Worked out here by Bugliosi. And collected by Spencer Tui. Tui has one of the goals. Good hip check on him, but he squeezes through the push of O'Rourke and then gets cut off by Flag. And St. Joe's can at least bounce it towards the neutral zone and break out potential three on two. Moving in near side is Fiore. Fiore cuts in, takes the shot pad save. The rebound just away from Michael Brazil. And here come the Quakers the other way. Zach Kian moving in, drags. He fires and a glove save by Schofield. Stopping play with 10-13 to go in the first period. Still a 2-0 lead for the Penn Quakers. First of 11 scheduled home games here at the Class of 23 Arena. Make sure you check out the Penn Hockey website or the ACHA website for the entirety of the schedule. Draw one back by Corey Long. Controlled here by the Hawks. Chris Hunter. Nice touch pass by Ford, but it's a little bit behind Long. And eventually cleared to the neutral zone, but it's cut off by Zach Kian. Taken over on the dump in by Tiui. Tiui goes wide, drops it off. Trying to reach for it as Jacob Kian. He heads to the corner. Tries to get back to his forehand. Throws it in the cage. It's blocked and drops loose, but St. Joe's is able to survive it and clear. Controlled here on the near side. Kyle Gross can't quite break in, so it's taken over by Tiui. He'll cut towards the middle. Calling for it is Zach Kian. He gets it on the drop. Throws it wide to the cage. Not really a attempted shot there. As it's turned around by Hunter to the far side for Frederick Roughgarden. His third year with the Hawks. Taken over, though, by Zach Kian and across down for Kevin Shen. Shen with a pass all the way across. Too strong for Trevor Kanji. Goes all the way down. Wide of the goal. Icing was already waved. St. Joe's. Pass up ahead. Intercepted into the slot. Kian with a shot that goes just wide. Zach Kian with a very well, a beautiful pass right to him. He's going to try to cut it out in front. And another save by Schofield. Now here's Shane Better to the corner. Better. He turns and fires. Blocker save. Loose in the slot. Bounces around. Still loose. Shot comes in. That's blocked. As Better couldn't get through the traffic. So he goes back behind the cage. Again, Quakers putting on the pressure. Amali can't keep it in the zone. So he'll dump it across here for Shen. Shen backhands it in deep as Penn touches up. And a collision away from the play. And then the outlet pass is deflected by Trevor Stimmel. 8.38 to go first period. Still 2-0 in favor of the Penn Quakers. So here's Aiden Amali to the outside. Good check on him by Kyle Gross as St. Joe's tries to dump it right back in. Amali takes it. Out to the neutral zone here for Griffin Bond. Throws it back now for better. Rather, that is Shen. Shen overskates the puck. Tucked away here by Gross. He'll try to move in for the Hawks. Heads to the corner. Stick check on him. Just back behind the cage. Kadahi still has it. And here for Gross. Good cycle work by St. Joe's. Pass to the slot and it goes through the crease. Now Griffin Bond. He's able to bounce it out to the neutral zone. And it's not going to make it for icing. So racing back here is Peter Borman. At Woodstock Mound, the long pass up ahead deflected into the zone. Drew Verman will get it across and a hand pass called. Play is stopped with 7.51 left to go here in the first period. Shots on goal, 16-4. In favor of the Penn Quakers. Back in the day, I believe Penn and St. Joe's were in the same conference. I know St. Joe's used to be in the old Maca, Macha, Mid-Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association. Here comes Chris Bugliosi moving in. He'll try a shot and it's blocked. I'm not sure if Penn was in that same league. I know they used to play against all those teams, though. So here's Abraham all the way back to the point. Tarazi, the shot and it's blocked. It's getting in the way as Michael Brazil. 
Dan Penn putting on pressure. Three low, still digging, and batted away by O'Rourke. Thrown towards the crease by Tarazi, bounces around after the kick save by Schofield, and eventually worked to the neutral zone. Now a race for the puck as Danny Flagg moves in. If he gets there, it's a two-on-one, pass to the slot, shot comes in, they score! Looks like it was Kyle Gross. No, it's Michael Brazil. Michael Brazil picks up his first goal of the season. And with 7.14 to go in the first, the Hawks are on the board. It's now 2-1. to one. And Penn smelled blood in the water. They were just pushing forward, thinking, all right, we'll get that third goal. But the counter punch. And now... Right off the draw, Jacob Kian moves in against Shane Wilson. Bank back to the point. Aiden Amali settles down and dumps to the corner here for Tui. Knocked away from him. Stick lift by Jackson. Rather, that was Matthew Hirschman. Backhanded along. Glove down by Houston. Houston to the far side. Shane Wilson tries to cut it off. Powered into the zone. And coming in here is Zach Kian. Tries to throw out in front, but backhanded away by Hirschman. Kane Joes. Have pulled back with it one, but it comes out in front. Trying to get the shot off with Zach Kian. Can't do it. Goes all the way back to the point. Houston has it hop over his stick. And then he throws a push. Now two on one again. As here comes Brazil. Brazil to the outside. Sharp angle. Tries the shot in the save. Rebound. It's turned off the side of the cage. Brazil throws it out in front. Goes back to the point for Wilson. He'll try the wrist shot and it's blocked. Oh, good push back here from St. Joe's after giving up the 2 0 lead. It's now 2 1. And they're getting their opportunities. On the far side, Michael Brazil. Dumps it in deep, looking for Eric Ford. So St. Joe's getting a change here, so no one's really to pass to. So an easy outlet, but it is kept alive temporarily by Christian Masanova. Taken here the other way. Nice move by Tui. He moves in, goes to the outside, takes a shot, and it rises high. Coming all the way across here, Kevin Shen. Tries to bank it up ahead, back in and deep by Trevor Kanji. Under six minutes to go in the first, 2-1. In favor of Penn. Deflected in deep. Wide of the cage. And left the side, almost wiping out Kevin Shen, but he got his footing. Clears through the neutral zone here into the skates of O'Rourke as he gets bumped by Trevor Kanji. Taken by Kevin Shen. Shen across, kind of fanned on the clear out. Second try is turned to the neutral zone and moved up now by Bond. Bond dumps it in deep and around. Back behind the cage, Schofield. Good four check by Penn. But still taken over by Neil Kadahi. Kadahi tries to clear to the neutral zone. Glove down by Abraham. Moving in three on two. He'll get a step to the slot, but then off the end of his stick. Just lost the handle. Kadahi gets run into by Bond. Bond trying to come up with it. Turned out here by St. Joe's, and he'll move the other way. Kadahi coming in now two on three. Tries to drag his way through, and he does. Goes to his backhand. Can't get the shot off. Now still has it in the corner. Tracks it to the slot. Shot comes in and a save. Rebound is controlled here by Gross after he gets the initial shot and moves to the corner. Tries to turn his way back behind the net. Near side corner. He gets pushed on the play by Rahman. And uh, trying to get it for Bond, but it's intercepted. Great work here by St. Joe's to keep in the zone. 4.30 left to go in the first period. 2-1 in favor of St. Joe's. Backhanded in here by Kadahi. Back behind the cage. Reversed here by Bugliosi to the corner, but the Hawks maintain possession. Gross dumps it back. Cycle work here for Stimmel. Stimmel throws out in front, but it's blocked. But it goes off the skates of Gross. Couldn't quite come up with it. It's still a scramble. Turned here. And cleared out by Shen. It'll go all the way down for an icing call against Penn. A desperate clear by the Penn Quakers. They'll take a peek at the St. Joe's goal. Again, after all that pressure put on by Penn, all it took was one nice little bounce and breakout pass and then a race for the puck. And the over-pursue, all alone in front and five-hole. 4.05 left to go here in the first period. A 2-1 to one lead for the Penn Quakers. But St. Joe's is knocking on the door. Back behind the cage, controlled by St. Joe's. Trying to get out in front, Danny Flagg, but he's slowed down by Chris Bugliosi. Kept in, Rister comes in, but fanned on there by Jack Moore. Big check thrown towards the half boards, 
And St. Joe's finds a way to keep it alive. Shot from the point, and it trickles past the post after the save. Back by the case, thrown out in front of the shot. Oh, a diving save by Averill. And he will hold on. He needed that stop there just to slow things down. Again, after a very quiet first 15 minutes, well, maybe first 12 minutes of the game, St. Joe's has turned it up. Shots at one point were 16 to three, they're now 16 to nine. Michael Brazil will take the draw for St. Joe's. The Kings Park Long Island native moves up, passes across, and into the skates of Fiore. Now back to the point. Dump back behind the cage. Taken over though by Amali around to uh, Jacob Kian. Pirouettes and back ends of the head here for Tiui. Tiui moving in two on two. Drags, tries to get free and does. Comes out in front, takes a shot, save. Rebound back here the side of the net by Kian. And the net is off its pegs with 3.21 to go in the first. It stays 2-1 to one Penn. Spencer Tiui and Calvin Aliferov, the goal scorers for the Penn Quakers. Michael Brazil for the St. Joe's Hawks. Face off lead to the right of Schofield. And late changes here by St. Joe's, but that's not going to be allowed. Again, Penn, the home team, they get last change. And it looks like the coaching staff for St. Joe's isn't all that pleased about it. Again, first game of the year for everybody, including the officials at the ACHA level, although some teams started last week and the week before. But in this area, not a lot of uh, ACHA hockey has been going on. So again, maybe an adjustment to the rules for everybody. I'll be honest with you, calling, again, just last week, calling 18 U games. I've called <laughs> games at every level. Sometimes I don't get it right. Looks like everything's squared away with the Jeopardy theme playing in the background. And it's taken over here by Penn. Swinging shot there by Kian, but not through traffic. So taken by Michael Brazil, two on two. Brazil, fans on it, fans on it again. And back in it away by Tarazi. Taken back by Tio. He overskates it. Grabbed here by uh, Tarazi. But it's intercepted by Shane Wilson. He gets bumped to the boards. Taken here by Zach Kian. Moves him to two on one. And a shot, and it goes high. Uh, looks like at least it was deflected off of the keeper Schofield because the draw will stay in the zone. But with 2.57 to go in the first period, Penn was that close to redoubling their lead. The so faceoff will be to the left of Schofield. Zach Kian, transfer from UCLA. Presumably to play with his brother, Jacob. This shot right at the draw is swallowed up by Schofield. Zach Kian is in his grad year. Jacob is in his freshman year. Both out of Illinois. Buck is down, taken here by uh, St. Joe's. Bounce to the line, kept alive by Amali temporarily. Jacob Kian comes out to help, and it's controlled here by Mark Tarazi. Tarazi up ahead, tipped in. And trying to chase down to it is Zach Kian. Kian stops in the corner, tries to shot, angle shot, save, rebound. It is controlled here by Borman. Borman tries to clear, can't do it. It's kicked along by Amali. Skitters out towards the, towards the slot but eventually cleared to the neutral zone. Aiden Amali gets back, though. Avoids the check. And puck comes to the near side, trying to get free. Shot comes in, blocker save as Tiui tried to move through. Tiui to the corner. Trying to get out in front, goes back behind the cage. Back in, around in front of the spin move, but it's cleared back to the point. Kept alive by Houston. To the near side, here's Bond. Bond throws to the cage, stick down, and covered by Schofield. With 2.03 to go in the first period, it stays 2-1 to one in favor of Penn. Mentioned during the pregame, Penn plays in the Colonial States Conference. St. Joe's in the ACC. Shane Better takes the draw for Penn. Out of Newmarket, Maryland. Wins it back to the point here for Roman. Up back for Better. Better throws it out in front, but unable to get the deflection on cage with Kanji. Here comes St. Joe's the other way. This is Kyle Gross. Gross to the outside. Nudge to the boards by Bill Houston. Taken over here by Roman. Roman streaks to the near side. Lost the handle. Gets it right back. But cleared away from him by Roughgarden. Dumped all the way down 
And icing will be called against St. Joe's with 1.36 to go in the first period. This is big here, late in the period. I don't think it's all that late in the shift for St. Joe's. But again, first period of the season. They might be a little gassed right now, so let's see if Penn can take advantage. Control to the corner here, Shane Wilson. Good step up, though, by Better. Better dumps it around the cage to the far side. Moving up now is Stimmel. He gets shouldered, so throws it on around for Wilson. 125 to go. Wilson across. Into the skates and then corralled here by Kadahi. Tries a shot deflected over the cage. Backhand around in front, goes out the back of the net. It's stuck back there, but now controlled by Houston. Bill Houston looks to the near side here for Shane Better. Can't control it clean with 105 to go. Turn to the far side for Rough Garden. Rough Garden up ahead. A little deflection, but it comes right to Better. Better leaves it aside, but moving up was Roman, so he'll have to chase it down himself. This is intercepted by Kadahi. Intercepted. Taken here by Bond. He can't control. Rough Garden. Bouncing puck goes all the way down. Actually, it was deflected. Icing waved off. 45 seconds to go in the period. Amali back behind. Shen, little trouble with it. Lost it at the point, but gets some help. And controlled here by Penn. Moving up now is Kevin Shen. Cuts back to the middle. Big check on him by Michael Brazil. But moving through, here is Abraham. Abraham tangled, dangled through traffic, but can't do it. Now we go the other way for a possible two-on-one. Moving in with some pace here is Michael Brazil. Brazil drags to the slot, gets double teamed, comes in on goal, actually went in, but the net is off its pegs. The puck actually went just into the net on the near side post right as the net was coming off. See if we can take a real quick peek at that. So we'll take a look at the rush again with such little time left and everyone tired. Everyone moving in towards him. And now well, that might have actually went in before the cage went off. But either way, it was waved off emphatically with 14.4 left to go on the clock. Step up here by Brazil. Taken away, and then taken right back, but only able to control. Three on two develops quickly, only eight seconds. Shot from the outside, blocker saved by Schofield. Far side, Bugliosi. Pinned to the boards by Borman, and that is how the period will come to an end. Well, shots on goal, a monstrous 33 shots registered in total. 23 to 10 in favor of Penn. They lead two to one, as we'll take a break and come back with second period action in about 15 minutes. You're watching uh, Penn Hockey here on the Sports Fan Base Network.
Welcome back, everybody, once again live from the Class of 23 Arena in Philadelphia on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome back to Penn Hockey as we get ready for second period action. Penn Quakers leading the St. Joe's Hawks by a score of 2-1. to one. Uh, Calvin Oliferoff and Spencer Tui, the goals for Penn, and the lone goal by Michael Brazil for the St. Joe's Hawks. Shots on goal, a whopping 23-10. to 10. It was worse than that. At one point, it was 16-3, to three. but St. Joe's had a real nice push last six, seven minutes of the first period. So they showed that they certainly could play against this uh, very good uh, Penn squad. By the way, um, let's take a look at the special team. St. Joe's 0 for 1, no shots. They gave up a shorthanded goal. Penn 1 for 1, and uh, they took only one shot on that power play, and obviously it went into the cage. Tom Williams here again. Thanks so much for joining us. It's opening night for both of these teams, although they may have played a couple of exhibitions here and there against the... Uh, youth teams or 18 new teams or maybe the Haverford Hawks took on the St. Joe's Hawks earlier who knows I honestly don't know but a fairly common occurrence is to get some work in against the local teams get ready for the non-conference conference schedule and hopefully into regionals and into the nationals and St. Joe's had some success in the old uh, Maka always a formidable squad uh, against teams like Rowan and Penn State and they're back in the same general league, although they play in the capital division of the ACC. Penn's been in the Colonial for as long as I can remember. I've been around uh, local ACHA hockey for over a decade, longer than that. Either way, we're back underway. We switch sides, no carry for penalties of power plays. Penn in the white, St. Joe's in the red. And it's one hand out to the neutral zone here for Drew Roman. Ramon to the near side, taken here by Ethan Abraham. Circles back and back into the zone. Backhands it in deep and fights off a check. Goes back behind the cage, taken here by Peter Borman. Ooh, dangerous pass across, but nobody there in white. So tipped out to the neutral zone by Mike Brazil. And the pass across is deflected off the leg, goes all the way back. And controlled here by Drew Ramon. Former Delco Phantom, the 16U AA level. Most of these guys are AA players. It's a very good level of hockey. It's taken here by Calvin Oliferoff. And the referee has the whistle to the mouth, but not put it, calling the offside. Looked like he was off. And it looks like it'll be no harm, no foul. As Penn couldn't get a shot off as Aiden Amali will move right back up the middle. Amali drags and fires, and it goes high. Now on the far side, here's Oliferov. Going to the corner now for Bugliosi. Throw out in front, shot comes in, blocker save. Rebound still sitting in the paint, but batted away. And St. Joe's can at least break out to the neutral zone. Lifted in deep by... The Hawks comes in on cage, covered up by Averill, and that will stop play. 18.46 to go here in the second period. Each team has picked up a shot on goal in this middle stanza. Face off to the right. I'm hoping I'm saying the name right. It could be Averill, but we're going to go with Averill for now, and please correct us. Find us on Twitter, the underscore SFBN, or you can do it to me personally. Tom Wilms, PXP. Cheap plug, and again, a way for you to, again, correct us on pronunciations. We certainly appreciate it. Want to get it right. Want to give these guys the credit they deserve. As this is dumped in deep by Frederick Roughgarden. Back behind the cage, Aiden Amali controls. And up ahead, tipped along here by Spencer Tui. Able to spin forward here is Zach Kian. Throws it across. Oh, just off the stick of Tui as he looked for his second of the game. Turned here by St. Joe's. Only able to quite clear out was Gross. So it's backhanded out to the neutral zone. And I'll say the neutral zone game of Penn is very good, but as we say that, a 2-on-1 develops the other way. Here's Kyle Gross moving in. Gross, skitters, shot, save, rebound, try another save with the pad of Averill. Cleared out to the neutral zone. We go the other way. Here's Tui coming in one-on-two. Tipped off his blade, followed up by Zakian. He'll throw a shot, and it goes wide. Looks like Schofield might have gotten a piece of that one. No oh, end-to-end -end action here at the Class of 23 Arena. It's taken here by Kevin Shen. Swung in, backhanded away, kicked out to the neutral zone off of better. And controlled here by Zach Kian. Kian up ahead, looking for Kenji. He gets slowed down at the line. And pickpocketed by Jack Moore, former Jersey Shore Whaler. Will get the return. Played some AAA at the 18U level. And those are the guys who tend to go to... Uh, NCAA programs and into a junior program. So certainly played with some really good competition. As here at the point, shot comes in, that's blocked down. And trying to move through here is Stimmel. 
But he lost it, and then trying to break through here is Kiam, but it lost off his stick. Catches up to it on the half boards. Good nudge from him on him. Still had the stick free. Throws it on Cage. Pat save. Loose out in front. Shot comes in another save as Better moved in from the post. 16.48 to go in the second. Still 2-1 in favor of the Penn Quakers. Trying to move up the boards is Ramon. And Penn's able to dump it in deep and get a change. Lifted along into the zone. Racing back here is Aiden Amali in his freshman year. Bunted down by Griffin Bond. Throws it across for Abraham. Into the zone, three on three. Tries a shot, shoulder save, and it goes in! Off the shoulder and in! 16-22 to go in the second, and it's 3-1 Quakers! Now well, that's one that every keeper would love to have back. Again, he made the save, but it skimmed off the top of his shoulder and just could not keep it out. So Ethan Abraham, the senior from New Rochelle, New York, gives the Quakers a two-goal lead. Puck down, back underway. Is trying to move in on that far side is Calvin Oliferov. Thrown off the scorer's window by Michael Brazil. Across the near side it comes. Racing up here is Peter Borman. Can't control it, it hops inside the Penn bench. Right below Alec Artaski, the head coach for the Quakers. I believe in his second year, and again, what a year it was last year. So we'll take a quick look at the uh, Quakers' goal as they will build it up. Then lift it along that far side. And again, off the shoulder and in. Meanwhile, go back to live action, and Penn breaks in once again as a lifter off. Back to the point. Amali tries a shot, and that whistles high. Pinch in, thrown from the near side point, and that's fought off. Schofield trying to see that through traffic and just able to turn it away on that wrister. Across now for Amali to the near side. Angle pass ahead. Turned up by Spugliosi. Moving in three on two, they're bunched. Near side, Ethan Abraham. Abraham tries to cut through. Good stand-up check on him by Jackson Shanahan. Rather, that was Michael Brazil. Brazil moves up two on two. Brazil, snapshot, and that goes wide. Look for the near side post. Pinch in one time slapper, and that goes wide and ends up out of play. Play stopped with 15 uh, 19 left to go here in the second period. And they got a 3 1 lead for the Penn Quakers. Face off to the right of Jack Averill out of Shelburne, Vermont. St. Joe's wins it back to the point. Wrist shot comes in through traffic, and it goes wide by Matthew Hirschman. Back to the point. Wilson, he'll throw it to the cage, and it rattles off the glass. Ryan Manns gets there. Rockaway, New Jersey. Back behind the cage. It's intercepted by Zach Kian. Pass up ahead. Moving up is Tui. Two on two. Tui to the outside. Goes back behind the net. Thought about the wraparound. Keeps it. Pass all the way across. One time drive, and it goes wide by Ramon. Now Tarazi shields it against the double team. Backhands it up ahead. Move to the outside by Tui. Tui to the corner. Back behind the net. Swept off his blade. Tui gets stick lifted. Back to the point. Kept alive. Ramon shot. Scores! Groove Ramon with a wrist shot from the far side point. 14.34 to go in the second. And it's 4-1 Quakers. Again, so much pressure put on by the University of Pennsylvania. The clear out doesn't work. The wrist shot just whistled high over Schofield. And St. Joe's calls timeout. And absolutely reeling in this period. Again, already trailing in shots 28 to 12 in the period 5-2. And again, those two last two goals coming in relatively quick success, succession. As we mentioned, this is opening night for both of these teams. Coming up next for St. Joe's, we'll play on Sunday, October 8th at Ryder University. Next up for Penn, a week from today here at the Class 23 Arena. So they'll take on Stockton University. And again, all home games for the Penn Quakers. We'll hear on the Sports Fan Base Network. So check the schedule and hope you can join us again.
This will be an extended timeout here from St. Joe's. Again, down four to one. Don't want to let this one get away. And we saw the record from Penn last year at 18 and one. By the way, I went back into the archives over the last few years, and Penn and St. Joe's hasn't they haven't played in a while. It's kind of shocking considering the distance between the two teams. Again, obviously Penn plays here. St. Joe's actually play at the Stadium in Haverford, which, depending on traffic, can take you anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours. Maybe that's why they don't play that often. <laughs> Back underway after the timeout and the takeaway here. Kadahi moves in, drops it off for Gross. Gross to the outside. Gross passed out in front and it's deflected back. Grabbed here by Roughgarden, and that's turned away. So good step up here from St. Joe's to get some opportunity right after the timeout. But weathering the storm is Jack Averill and the Penn Quakers. Behind here is Frederick Roughgarden, overskates the puck, looks out in front. It's still loose and kicks to the near side. And it pinballs out to the neutral zone. Aiden Amali throws it in on cage from way out. And a regroup here from the Hawks. Trying to turn back with it is Peter Borman out of the Howard Huskies organization down in uh, Maryland. Overskating the puck here is Kevin Shen, but a last second stick, stick check on Brazil avoids another two on one. Now trying to move through him here is Borman, and he gets hit. Physical play starting to pick up. Trying to move through here is Shen. Shen can't get free. Knocked to the half boards down to the corner for Peter Borman. Rolls out to the neutral zone. Here's Stimmel moving in two on three. Pass across for Gadahi. It's a shot and a save by Averill. That'll stop play with 13-18 left to go. Here in the second period, stays a 4-1 lead for the Penn Quakers. Late night start here at the Class of 23 Arena. A yeah, fairly regular occurrence in the ACHA. I'm not sure if Kentucky still does this. I think there was a time where they played all of their home games at midnight. That's because that's when they can get the uh, ice time, and they always pack the place. It's moving in here is Aliferov. Moving in, back in towards the front of the crease, and a save. Nets off its pegs, and play is stopped with 13.06 left to go in the second period. Now, when I first started getting involved in ACHA hockey 24 years ago, University of Virginia would play their, they play a two-game series against everybody. And it was a 10-15 Saturday night game and then a 10-15 morning game. Here on the near side is Calvin Oliferov. He'll try a shot and it's blocked wide. Racing over here is Bugliosi. Can't quite get free, now he does. Tries a backhand across, but he blocked his own backhander. Now trying to spin through here is Masanova, but lost his blade. So Penn will be allowed to regroup, but good pressure put on again by Masanova. Helped out to the neutral zone and down. Not going to make it for icing. So here's Shane Wilson. Wilson up ahead here for Eric Ford. Tipped out. Not going to make it for icing. As here's Amali. Aided Amali. Tries the near side. A little bit too strong, but then in stride, grabbing his Calvin Oliferov. Oliferov to the outside. Tries to shield it. One hands it out in front. He goes off the net. The net comes off its pegs. And play is stopped with 12.22 left to go in the second. Just tried to crash the net, and literally that's exactly what he did. Just could not get the puck in the net. Draw will be, well, interestingly enough, they're putting it inside the zone which would lead me to believe that the net was knocked off by the keeper, but I don't know if that was the case. But the officials have made their call. Shot right up the draw, save, rebound, trickles back behind the keeper. It's still loose, shot comes in, and the whistle blows before they can get the shot off as the referee lost sight. 12-15 left to go in the second. Penn really kind of digging for that fifth goal, thinking that might be the dagger. And 4-1 is going to be tough enough for St. Joe's to come back from. The draw will be to the right of Schofield. Again, he's made 26 saves, and we're not even halfway through this game. Here's Amali at the point. Drive comes in, and it's blocked wide. Near side, Tarazi. He'll throw it to the cage, and it's blocked as well. Back in it away by O'Rourke, and out to the neutral zone. Spencer Tui 
Across now for Aiden Amali. Up ahead, too strong for Jacob Kean. Tipped out to the neutral zone again. Amali tries the backhand deep, can't do it. Across the near side it comes. Chopped up ahead here by Brazil. Two on two develops. Now two on one. Lifted out in front, but squeezed away by Amali. And ooh, thrown out in front of his own cage. But turned by Zach Kian. Passed too strong for Mark Tarazi. He'll chase it down and avoid the icing. Chopped to the corner with a little help from Zane O'Rourke. Now here's Jacob Kian. Help coming from Zach. Zach trying to get out in front. Gets his stick free. Tries a shot, but it's blocked off the leg of Borman. Back behind the net here is Kian. Rolls through him. And now the Hawks can break out to the neutral zone. So here's Nick Fiore. Fiore trying to power through the check of Tui. Still has possession. Trying to get it to the corner. Gets hit up high. Penalty coming up. It's going to be against Penn. So here's Borman into the zone. Oh, a bit of a crunch there and some pushes and shoves. Between Kyle Gross and Spencer Tui. As it looks like we'll have, a, we'll definitely have one penalty. Not sure if that late little push at the t will draw a second. The officials will talk it over. It'll be Zach Kian being escorted to the box. And it looks like that's going to be the only penalty. So St. Joe's looks to be going on the power play. Their second power play, 0 for 1, did not get a shot. And they gave up a shorthanded goal. But again, a chance here to turn the momentum in their favor. Something they did very well at the end of the first period. At the time, it was 2 to 1. Now it's 4 1. Draw to the left of Jack Averill. Controlled right away by Griffin Bond. And unable to slap it into the zone, or at least keep it alive, was Peter Borman. So now some neutral zone play here. The Hawks will have to deal with it. Danny Flagg throws it on back. 1.45 to go in the power play. Nice cut move to the middle. Brazil lost it to space. Nobody there. Then he gets shouldered by uh, Bill Houston. Back behind the net. Brazil kick to the stick. Good pressure on him by Roman, and the clear. Again, St. Joe's thinking that Penn wouldn't chase him to the boards, and the penalty's coming up here against Penn. They'll give it away. Obviously no goal after it was given to Griffin Bond, and now it'll be a two-man advantage as heading to the box for Penn is Dhruv Roman. So here is St. Joe's opportunity to get back in it. Trailing four to one, they'll have a minute nine, a minute 14 rather, of five on three time. So the iron three for the Penn Quakers looks like it'll be Mark Tarazi, Aiden Amali, and Spencer Tui. As the draw is won back by St. Joe's. Wilson up ahead. To the slot, shot comes in, save, rebound, still sitting there, back in, try another save by Averill. Turned out here by Amali, and he will clear it. Ooh, inside the St. Joe's bench. I think he was trying to either clear it off the glass or he just got underneath it a little. Certainly not what you want to do is throw it into the other team's bench on purpose. 59 seconds in the five on three. Face off down and controlled here by Penn. Shot from way outside by Tui. Serves as a good clear. Halfway through the game, 45 seconds to go in the St. Joe's power play. It's 4-1 in favor of the St. Joe's Hawks. Moving in here is Christian Masanova. Masanova skids to a stop, lost control, and an easy clear for Penn. Well, they're kind of, I wouldn't say over-pursuing, but they're very smart. They're recognizing that St. Joe's is breaking in just one guy coming in, moving up the boards. So they're going to cut him off and get the easy clear. See what they try here as Masanova tries to break in. Masanova trying to do it himself. He's shouldered off by Tarazi and another clear by the Quakers. 13 seconds to go in the power play. And it doesn't look like, actually, there's been one shot on the five-on-three portion of the power play. Maybe one last rush on the five-on-three, but they're not going to hurry. So five-on-three is now five-on-four. Trying to move through the middle, kicked into the zone. They're going to call it onside. 
But it's taken back by Penn. Here's Aiden Amali, and he'll frisbee it down. And unable to glove it down is Oliferov. Coming out is the keeper, Schofield, to turn it back behind the cage. 30 seconds to go in the power play for St. Joe's, but it's Penn with possession. And it's coming to the near side corner is Eric Ford. 20 seconds to go in the power play. Michael Brazil comes it behind the cage for Kyle Gross. Gross out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Played for Team Philadelphia, the 18U AA level. Tipped out to the neutral zone here for Danny Flagg. Seven seconds to go in the power play. Little's take the dump in. Icing waved off. And maybe one last clear, an outlet pass, it connects. And moving in here is Oliferov. Power play over, they're 0 for 3. Oliferov will just turn back, dump it to the near side, try to time his way into the zone, and he did, then he's double teamed. But the puck is down, shot comes in by Kanji, and that goes wide. So now Penn, after being shorthanded for so long, they're back to a taking control of the game. But now here's Flag to lift it out to the neutral zone. Glove down by Houston, under some pressure. And he'll move right up the middle. Houston tries to get into a shooting lane. Turns back to the hashes, passes all the way back to the point. Moving in Ramon, the shot blocker, save! Good stop there by Schofield, who again has been under siege, making his 27th save of the game. Pass across to the neutral zone. O'Malley dumps it right back in on cage. So steered away for Rough Garden to take over. At a Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. Tipped into the zone. Icing already waved as here's O'Malley. Now for Roman. Roman chips to the near side. And penalty coming up. It's going to be a slashing call against St. Joe's. So Penn will go on their second power play. And we mentioned earlier how St. Joe's was looking to get back in this thing. Now Penn may be looking to put this game away. As into the box for the Hawks goes Frederick Roughgarden. And to take the draw for Penn already is Calvin Oliferov. But controlled and won back by Kadahi. Cleared out. No, it's knocked down. Grabbed here by Abraham. Shot and a skate save by Schofield. Back it comes here for Buglosi who pinches in. Bugliosi drops it to the corner trying to move through as Oliferov. 1.43 to go on the power play. Back here for Houston. Throws it side of the cage. Abraham thrown in front. Still loose. Shot comes in. Save. Nets off its pegs. It goes in, but the net is off. And it was off for a good couple of seconds. And that's a situation where the ref could say, well, it was going in anyway. But again, the net was off long enough that, again, probably the whistle should have been blown a couple seconds earlier. 6.45 left to go in the second. 1.34 remaining in the power play for the Quakers. As it comes back to the point and poked out to the neutral zone on the clear by Kyle Gross. Trying to make the turn back, Bugliosi. Rather, that's Abraham. And he gets cut off by Gross, who dumps it all the way down. Averill, back behind the net. Good push there on Bugliosi. Leaves it aside for Ethan Abraham. Out of the Millbrook School. Already has a goal in this one. Lofted up ahead here for Houston. Houston goes wide. Throws it towards the cage, deflected wide by Abraham. 1.15 to go in the Penn Quaker power play. Tries to get to his forehand, back right behind the cage. Throws out in front into the skates of Tarazi. A lifter off to the corner. Fans on the pass back to the point. So Zeno Rourke can take it and clear to the line and out. 55 seconds to go in the power play. Little pressure put on by St. Joe's is trying to forecheck as Trevor Stimmel. And again, it is dumped in deep this time by Jack Moore. Rather, that is Ryan Manns. 38 seconds to go on the pen power play. Bugliosi moving in. Trying to get across. Chopped off his blade. Followed up by Jacob Kian. And rolls out to the neutral zone. Drew Raman. Back for Amali. Amali up the middle. Trying to tip it along is Kian. Zach Kian to the corner. Gets nudged to the boards by Borman. And what do we have here? Nets off its pegs. We'll say that this is a very well-used facility. Again, there was a Drexel practice right before. Again, this is, this is a very busy facility. So to keep the ice and 
the net pegs and everything else in working order is a massive challenge, which they meet every day. But sometimes maybe you breathe on the post and it comes off a little bit too easy. 11 seconds to go in the power play for Penn. Look at the very least get the draw deep in the St. Joe's zone. One, two, three, four, five out there. Actually, six out there for St. Joe's. Now there's five. There's supposed to be four. Now it looks like we're ready. Puck is down. Back to the point it goes here for Shen. Shen across. One time drive, and it goes well high by Rahman. And out of play. 5.16 left to go in the second. And five seconds remaining in the Quaker power play. Zach Kien to take the draw for Penn. Controlled here by Tui. Tui across. One time drive. Scores! An absolute rocket from Dhruv Rahman. His second of the game. 5.08 to go in the second. It's now 5 1 Quakers. They were trying to set him up earlier with that one when he basically notched a field goal that was so high. But that one right in the wheelhouse. And not much that Christopher Schofield can do with it. So a 5-1 lead for Penn. And again, that was right after the penalty expired. So no power play goal there. They're now one for two with two shots. This is thrown out in front. Trying to get a turnaround shot there was gross, but it's blocked. And Savardian spin move by Tui. At least gets it to the neutral zone for Kian, but right back ahead, trying to move through is Peter Borman. Rumbling up ahead and losing his footing is Brazil. Still on his back, throws it out in front. Shot comes in, and that doesn't go through. That would have been beautiful. As this is chipped towards the cage, and a save by Averill. The opportunity by Hirschman. 4.30 to go in the second. Pinch in here by Borman. Throws it to the cage. They score. It may have been deflected out in front by Danny Flagg. It looks like it is Danny Flagg, his first of the year. And with 4.24 to go in the second, Hawks are back on the board, trailing 5-2. to two. You throw it to the net, fun things happen. Danny Flagg, the former Grundy senator, with the deflection out in front. And again, after giving up that fifth goal, turned up the pace, but now they've got to do that for the next 24-plus minutes to get back in this thing. And St. Joe's at this point just can't afford any lulls. As Amali controls here to the near side, Houston. Houston up ahead, tipped by four, trying to move out in front, but it's knocked away. Now two on two the other ways. Here comes Better. Shane Better settles it, takes a shot, and is blocked. Still battling. He gets thrown to the ice, turned around by Ford. Ford outlets up ahead. Ford right back up to it, and he'll tip it in deep, but runs into Houston. Spins to the corner, and Ford comes up with it. Ford near side. Wilson back behind the net. Shane Wilson trying to settle it down. Stick lifted by Amali. Goes back behind the cage. Here for Ford. Thrown out in front, but the only one there is Kanji, and a penalty coming up. It's going to be a hooking call against Penn. As Kyle rather, looks like Bill Houston going to the box. Well, we have a second. Let's take a look at Penn's fifth goal. While well, they sort out the penalties. Again, just a nice one-time pass and bang. Back underway, thrown towards the cage, deflected wide. Again, we are live. A little bit of a graphic mishap. <laughs> Jumped all the way down by Penn. Again, they are the team shorthanded. Power play for the St. Joe's Hawks, their fourth of the game. 0 for 3 with three shots. Three on two to off, now four on two. Trying to sweep in deep here as Kadahi goes to the corner now for Masanova. He gets smeared to the boards, and it is cleared out to the neutral zone. Nick Fiore, former Delaware Junior Blue Hen, 
Shane Wilson. Out of the Quakers Hockey Club in Westchester, formerly in Westchester. As they used to be at Ice Line. I think they're at a different rink now. Here's Tarazi. Backs it up ahead. This is off a glove of Abraham, taken by Tarazi. Really could have been a uh, hand pass, but not detected. So here's Abraham. Tries the near side, looking for a lift off. Moving in shorthand. It goes to his backhand, trying to get to his forehand and a save. Didn't quite get to the forehand, but he took the shot, and that's fall off by Schofield. 48 seconds to go in the power play for St. Joe's. Shot comes in. That's blocked off the leg of Amali. Amali cuts off Kadahi, and it is cleared to the neutral zone. Off the official. Turns into two on one. Here's Zach Kian moving in. Kian pass across and deflected away. And here comes St. Joe's the other way with 30 seconds to go in the power play. Brazil. Shot comes in and a save by Averill. Brazil to the corner. Back to the point, Mans. Bounces it up ahead. Kicked away where it's controlled by Bugliosi. He'll try to get a step. On Ryan Manns, coming in one on three, shorthanded, almost got free. He's hauled down, penalty called. That is great hard work by Chris Bugliosi. So there goes the power play for St. Joe's. 0 for 4, no shots on that power play. We'll play 4 on 4 for 11 seconds. As into the box for St. Joe's goes Danny Flagg. 1.43 to go in the second period. As Zach Kian will take the draw. Looks like it gets Kyle Gross. Puck is down, controlled by St. Joe's. Borman throws it across now for Rough Garden. Rough Garden clears to the neutral zone. Bouncing puck, knocked away by Roman, and the power play begins for Penn. It's their third. They're one for two with two shots. Thrown out in front. Kicks off a leg, and it's off the side of the net on the opportunity by Tui. Worked across the far side. Roman settles, drags, and waits. All the way across for Amali. Amali angles to the corner. Taken by Zach Kian. Back for Roman. Zach Kian. Looks, fires, and it goes wide. Is pinching in from the near side. It was Tui. Thrown out in front. It goes all the way through. Nets off its pegs, and play is stopped. 56.1 to go here in the second period. Barring a pen goal, by the way. Penalty will carry over into the third. And since it was really nobody's fault that the net came off, both teams allowed to get some changes if they want. Calvin Oliferoff will take the draw for Penn. Buck down almost came out in front, knocked away by Roughgarden. Controlled near side, though. Abraham back to the point. Houston. Back for Abraham. Looks for the cross ice pass, but it's deflected away from Bugliosi. He'll try to chase it down and keep it alive and does. Low three on two. So here's a lift off across the one timer. It's fanned on by Abraham. Back to the top of the slot. Backhander towards the front of the cage. Backhander goes wide by a lift off. 30 seconds to go in the period as it's dumped all the way down by St. Joe's. Now moving up, Bill Houston. Here's a lift off. Gets through the wrap check. Still harassing, though, is Kadahi, and it's cleared all the way down again. Maybe one last rush in the period. Just 10 seconds remaining. Quakers taking their time. Don't want to make a mistake here. Tarazi, pass up ahead, connects to Abraham. He's in. Shot, glove save by Schofield. And that will stop play as the buzzer goes. 40 minutes in the books. And the Penn Quakers carry a 5-2 lead. We'll take a break and come back with third period action in just a few minutes. But first, we'll take a real quick peek at that last St. Joe's goal that got them within three and turned this into, a again, a chance for them to come back in this one. Just a shot from the near side and a beautiful deflection out of the air that gave St. Joe's their second goal of the game. We head to the third in just a few minutes. Back in a moment here on the Sports Fan Base Network.
Welcome back, everybody, once again live from the Class of 23 Arena in Philadelphia. Getting ready for third period action as the Penn Quakers lead the St. Joe's Hawks by a score of 5-2. to two. We have some carryover. Penn is on the power play for the first 18 seconds of the period. Shots on goal in the second. Penn with 12, two-period total of 35. St. Joe's with 7, two-period total of 17. St. Joe's 0 for 4 on the power play with three shots. They've given up a shorthanded goal. Penn is 1 for 2 with two shots, and they are again on their third power play of the game. Tom Williams here again. Thanks so much for joining us into the late evening here in University City, Philadelphia. He's trying to move through. It's at Kian, but can't quite do it. It's pitchforked all the way down. And that could be enough to uh, kill the uh, power play, but I think the official lost uh, the handle on the situation, so... Yeah, he's coming over to the referee and say, yeah, I goofed. And uh, unless he has a call. Oh, and they're going to move the draw to the center dot. Usually when you miss an icing call, they leave it in the zone. But I think they recognize that maybe Penn was going to clear out anyway. Penn wins the draw and makes it all the mood point. And uh, that'll do it. Power play over for the Penn Quakers. They're now one for three with four shots. There were two shots on that power play. They move in two on two. Shot comes in and a pad save. Trying to look through the near side post was Roman looking for the hat trick goal. By the way, it doesn't look like there's any change in goal. Christopher Schofield still in for St. Joe's. Jack Averill in for uh, the Quakers. And St. Joe's having some trouble clearing out. Thrown towards the front of the net by Zach Kiem, but turned around here by Peter Borman. Borman up the far side boards. Hops over a stick. And Tarazi will bank it up ahead. Reflected right back to him, so he'll try it again to clear to the neutral zone, zone for uh, Spencer Tui. Tui comes in three on two, drags, lost it, gets it back, and circles back to the half boards. And back towards the corner, trying to keep it deep. Trying to drag his way free and does. Goes back behind the cage, and he'll go to the corner. A little bit too much of the way of individual play there. It's not going to work at this level. Again, he's a senior, so he knows it, but again, he's had some success today. And he takes on some of the upper echelon teams. It may not work as well as it's worked today. As here's Abraham. Sharp angle shot, and that's deflected wide. Here, Tarazi to control. Tries to throw it in deep. And a second try, at least kept it, kept it alive. And then soccered out to the neutral zone. And now St. Joe's will break out. As here's Masanova to the outside. Masanova trying to get it deep. St. Joe's needs a change. 18-20 to go in the third. Comes out in front. Still loose. And back to the point. Jack Moore tries a shot, and it goes off the side of the net. May have been deflected on its way through. Back behind the net, throw it in front, goes back to the slot. Shot comes in, they score! It's Frederick Ruffgarden. Ruffgarden, his first of the year with 18.04 to go in the third. And the Hawks have pulled within two. It's 5-3. Again, a lot of traffic out in front, which has served Penn very well because they get in all the lanes, but it also screens the keeper. And now it's given away, moving in. Bugliosi, the shot off the crossbar. 
Oh, that would have been a big time response from the Quakers. As here's Abraham. Abraham thrown out in front, deflected, and it goes wide by Alifarov. Thrown back out in front, and it squeezes to the near side. Taken here by Bugliosi. Drops it off. Houston, a shot in a pad, saved by Schofield. He gets it back. Throws it back, but it's off of Bugliosi. Kept alive. Shot comes in. That's blocked. Now here's Amali. He'll try to step up. Over now for Bugliosi. Has to play it to the corner. Good response here from the Quakers after giving up the goal. Abraham. That gets blocked. And one-handed out to the neutral zone. Aiden Amali. Moves to the outside. Still moving in. Amali throws it out in front. Still loose as he tried to connect with Calvin Alifarov. Turned here by Frederick Roughgarden. Tipped out to the neutral zone. And at the very least, St. Joe's able to relieve the pressure. Near side, here's Shane Better. Turns into a three on two. Better drags, fires, and it goes high. Michael Brazil overruns it. Taken back here. Shot comes in, pad save as the shot got through by Kanji. Another shot by Rahman. That ends up going wide. Pressure put on by Griffin Bond. Good poke check on him. He tries to turn and at least kick it alive, and he does. Taken here, though, by Moore, and he'll pitch fork it down. All the way down it goes, and icing is waved. Rahman around the far side. Four check by Fiore. Throws it out in front, but deflected away by Shane Better. Kicks it out to the line, fouls it up, and is able to clear. Up the far side into the reach of Brazil. He's got a goal in this one. And this almost came in on Cage. Dangerous stick handling from Drew Roman. As this will go up and out of play. 16-10 to go in the, in the third period. And it's 5-3. to three. Well, how did we get here? Uh, we'll take a look at that last goal. As again, St. Joe's put on all the pressure in the early part of the period. And again, all the way back to the point, allowed to step up and just rifled it home up the crossbar and down. Puck is down and controlled by Penn, and ooh, out of play. Again, these half boards are not exactly NHL regulation, and there was a group of fans sitting over there. Uh, they were able to bail out. It's interesting that these... The glass here is an NHL regulation as far as its size is concerned because NHL teams practice here all the time. This here's Shane Wilson with a wrist shot, and that's blocked out in front. We'll expand on that next whistle. So here's Ruf Roman to try to clear up ahead here for Shane Better. Moving up three on three. Better drifting in, throws it towards the cage. It goes off the leg of Wilson to the corner. Now Kian. Good battle to the corner. Worked up ahead here for Stimmel. Stimmel with a blind backhand pass out of the reach of Kyle Gross. Coming back for it is Mark Tarazzi. Now the Pelham, New York in his freshman year. Right back ahead here is Griffin Bond. Bond surveys, chops it across. Tui can't control it clean. This will be dumped all the way down. And icing is waved off as the keeper came out to play it. Even if you fake coming out to play it, you, they'll wave it off. So this is backhanded up ahead for Kian. Kian could not play it cleanly. He'll just chase it to the corner. Kian spins it out in front, but... Two, he has to play it back to the corner for Kian. Gets it knocked away from him to the near side. Racing over is Jacob Kian. Up now to Zach. They switch and absorbs the shoulder there from O'Rourke. Still battling is Jacob. Chopped to the corner. And coming to get it here is Zane O'Rourke up the boards. Tarazi hips it alive and throws it back behind the net. Right now, Penn just trying to keep St. Joe's pinned. As here's Tui, the shot and it goes wide. Might have been more of a pass for Kian, but it was in his skates. Back at the point, shot comes in, that's off the glove of, of uh, Kadahi, and we go the other way. Three on three, and offside is called as he came in just a step too soon. 14.37 to go in the third period, and it stays a 5-3 lead for the Penn Quakers. Those who don't know, I believe they still do this, but whenever the Wells Fargo center ice is not available, to a prospective road team. This is one of the arenas they tend to come to. We're a bunch of years ago watching the Edmonton Oilers and the Carolina Hurricanes practice here. Again, Flyers have actually played games here back in the 60s. As here moving in is Danny Flagg. He's tripped. As reaching in was Dhruv Rahman. So now it'll be St. Joe's back on the power play. They've been unsuccessful, but all it takes is one. To get it rolling, this will be their fifth. They're 0 for 4 with three shots, and they've given up a short-handed goal. Yeah, and this building has been the home for 
Penn Hockey, obviously since the beginning, from the varsity days. Drexel also uses this rink. Ed Snyder Foundation uses this rink. As this is intercepted, as here comes Ethan Abraham, two on one, shorthanded. Abraham drags, passes across, it's blocked. And now here come the Hawks the other way on a three on two. Moving up the near side is Ryan Manns. Manns drags, overskates the puck, tries to backhand it deep, and at the very least keeps it alive. Power play continues for St. Joe's, a minute 37 to work. As here's Borman, back up ahead. Pass across, deflection! And it is swallowed up by Averill. It was some celebration on the near side, but that was more hopeful than factual. 13.49 to go in the third, 1.29 remaining in the St. Joe's power play. Also, this building was the home of an NAHL team at the junior tier two level, the Philadelphia Rebels. We're back in the area, now playing in Sewell, New Jersey. A little mindless trivia. <laughs> here is Fiore for the pass across. Shot comes in, that's blocked. Racing over here is going to be Neil Kadahi. Back to the point, Fiore. Wilson, the pass over. Shot comes in, pad save, rebound, and it's underneath Averill. Play stop with 13.30 to go in the third and 1.10 remaining in the St. Joe's power play. I wouldn't say this is a must score, but it's very close to it. I mean, they'll certainly put a ton of pressure on the Quakers if they can pop one home here. The faceoff is to the right of Averill. The sophomore from Vermont. Corey Long will take the draw against Zach Kien. Long wins it. Half boards Masanova. Shouldered off by Zach Kien. He turns and fires it all the way down. One minute to go in the Hawks' power play. Goes back behind the cage. Shane Wilson out of Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. Tries the near side. Waiting for it. Kadahi didn't get a good touch on it. And an easy clear by Kevin Shen. Now stepping up is Spencer Tui. Goes back behind the cage. Short-handed. Tui dangles. And he's going to rag. Tarazi. Across now for Kevin Shen. Shen will just toss it to the corner. 30 seconds to go on the St. Joe's power play. Shane Wilson has it once again. Pass up the near side boards, but it's intercepted by Zach Kian. But then followed up by Kadahi. The outlet pass too strong for Masanova. 15 seconds to go on the power play for St. Joe's. So they're desperate here to try to get something rolling. Big collision in the corner. Pass comes out in front. Shot comes in, and it goes high. It's going to be an elbowing call as there was a collision. Not sure who it's going to be on, though. I believe it's against St. Joe's, but I am incorrect. It is going to go against Mark Tarazi. So it'll be five on three for the second time in this game for St. Joe's. It'll be just for seven seconds. But seven seconds turns into about ten by the time the previous offender gets back on. And they'll kill it as they're able to clear it all the way around. So five on three, quickly back to five on four for the next minute 50. I think we're getting closer to must score on this power play here for St. Joe's. Good step up. Brazil trying to chase onto it, can't do it. Taken here by Amali. Three on one shorthanders. Here's a lift for off moving in. He'll take a shot and a save by Schofield. Good response from Schofield as now we go the other way. Danny Flagg coming in. Poke check on him by Bill Houston. Then he's cut off. Houston gets it right back, tries to work it up the boards. Comes out in front, controlled by Amali. And outlets up ahead for Aliferov for another two-on-one shorthanded. He moves in. Aliferov, wrist shot, score! Calvin Aliferov picks the corner. It's his second of the game. 11.38 to go in the third. It's 6-3 Quakers. A second shorthanded goal. For the Penn Quakers, may have just sealed this game up by three with 11.38 to go. Again, right now you have St. Joe's taking chances. It's what you do when you're, you're, you're behind the game. But you get the risk of the two-on-ones against you. And that's exactly what happened there. So 6-3 in favor of St. Joe in favor of Penn. Dumped all the way down by St. Joe's. This will be an icing call. With 11.20 left to go in the third. 53 seconds remaining in the St. Joe's power play. They'll have to start from scratch all the way back in their own zone. 
So we come to you from the Class of 23 Arena in Philadelphia. Tom Wilms here again. Thanks so much for joining us for our coverage of Penn Hockey here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Hawks taking their time behind the cage as Wilson outlets it to the near side, looking for Kodahi. Moving in up the middle. Tracks to the outside. Good poke check on him by Shen. Gets the return pass, though. Towards the corner, he has to chase it. That he's run to the ditch by Zach Kien. And it'll be taken out to the line and out as the angle was played by Fiore. 18 seconds to go in the power play for St. Joe's. 10-40 remaining in the third. 6-3 in favor of the Quakers. Wilson will try the far side on the breakout this time. Backhands it along to the outside. Christian Masanova, former Hollydale Hurricane, tries to pass it back to the point. Partially blocked as the power play expires. So now St. Joe's is 0 for 6. They've scored two shorthanded goals. And there were a total of three shots on the power play. Grabbed here by Aiden Amale. Pass across and... Uh, Whistle's blown. And let's see what the call will be. Well, we may not get the call, so to speak. Just because the conversation's happening on the other side. And just judging by the body language, it does look like it's going to be pen on the power play. But while they work things out, we'll take a look at Penn's last goal that made it a three-goal matchup. Again, another two-on-one, used him as the decoy, and doink, right underneath the crossbar. Doesn't look like anything's on the board. Doesn't look like anyone's in the box. This might be just a hand pass. No, it looks like they are going to direct somebody to the box. So it will be a pen power play. As into the box goes Trevor Stimmel. Power play number four. They're one for three with four shots. This here's Amali. Drags across the far side. Step up by Tui. Tui, Amali. Wrist shot goes just wide. Grabbed off the backboard by Borman. Can't clear. Nice play off the boards here by Tui. But he lost it, and it's deflected all the way down. 1.38 to go in the power play for Penn. Another goal here will certainly put this game away. As it goes to the far side, intercepted. Manns tries a shot, didn't really get anything on it. So Zach Kian will move up three on two, but good harassment from behind by Ryan Manns. Here's Amali. Up now for Jacob Kian. He moves in three on two. Kian waits, fires, and a save by Schofield. And that will stop play with 9.18 to go in the third. 1.13 remaining in the power play for Penn. And last year, Penn coming off a 18-1 regular season. Only lost two games the entire year. That is a very good record at the ACHA level. So here's Zane O'Rourke to come up with it, and he'll clear it down. So Penn will try again. This is Bill Houston. Cross now for Bugliosi. Houston cuts to the near side, and he'll try to break into the zone. Under a minute to go in the power play. Drops back towards the point. Abraham able to squeeze his way free. Gets to the dot. Takes a shot. Blocker save. Rebound. Trying for it. There was a lift for off, but couldn't get it to go. Pass out in front is intercepted and cleared all the way down. Taken here by Averill with 38 seconds to go in the Quaker power play. Bugliosi across, deflected by Houston. Connects to Tarazi. Up now for Abraham. Abraham draped on and good. Clear out. As getting in the way was Neil Kadahi, former Palmyra Black Knight. 23 seconds to go in the power play. Neil Kadahi for checking. Meanwhile, behind the play, getting the stick knocked out of his hand was a Leferov. No call made. Two on two develops. Here's Tarazi, the shot and a pad save. And as he does so, he is wrecked by O'Rourke. Physical play starting to pick up. As returning the favor is Tarazi. St. Joe's unable to clear, but the power play expires anyway. 
Taken here by Abraham. Throws it out in front, goes all the way through. Two shots on that power play, by the way. Penn is now one for four. This comes in on Cage, easily steered away by Averill. Then Aiden Amali with the nutmeg. Up ahead. And it'll go all the way down. Icing waved off. Griffin Bond gets there. Bond. Pass out in front block. Gets it right back. Tries again. That's turned away by Wilson. Wilson up the far side with 7.30 to go. Clears to the neutral zone. And a collision and a penalty coming up here against St. Joe's. Now, that's the calling it against Penn. It looked like Danny Flagg ran into Bill Houston. But maybe it's something else that they're calling is going into the box is Shane better. Either way, St. Joe's will go to the power play. Forgive me for the radio silence here, but I'm eavesdropping on the uh, officials trying to talk. Does look like it is going to go against better, and it is a power play for St. Joe's. They are 0 for 6 with six shots. They've given up two shorthanded goals, and here's another shorthanded opportunity as Tui moves in with some pace. Tui fires and a save. He was chased the whole way from behind by Nick Fiore, and that was enough to at least uh, avoid him making multiple moves. Seven minutes left to go here in the third period. St. Joe's stuck in their own zone with a minute 30 to go in their power plays. Here's Neil Kadahi moving in. All the way across the far side, connects. Now return to the slot into the skates of Fiore. He wasn't ready with stick down, so it's an easy clear for the Quakers. 1.17 to go in the power play for the Hawks. Being outshot 44-23 but still find themselves somewhat in this game, especially if they can score a goal here on the power play. So Rourke goes back behind the net, tries the near side for Flag. Flag to the point, settled there, blocked as the shot could not go through by Borman, Go all the way down. On the four check of Jacob Kian. Kian, good check on him. Kicks it back behind the cage where it's taken by Michael Brazil. Out of Kings Park, Long Island, Good possibility me and him skated at the same rink. Superior ice rink in Kings Park. So I skated uh, a million years ago. See here on the near side. It's taken out by Ryan Manns. Manns drags, fires, and a blocker save. Actually, I think it's a shaft of the stick of Averill. 18 seconds to go in the Hawk power play. Goes back behind the net. Eric Ford, rather than that is Griffin Bond, and he's able to clear. 10 seconds to go in the power play for St. Joe's. 5.30 to go in the third period. They're starting to run out of time here. As the power play expires, they're now 0 for 7. They got one shot on that power play. Now moving in is Kyle Gross. Shoulder to shoulder with Bill Houston. who dumps it back behind the cage. Aiden Amali will move out. Up now for Aliferov. Aliferov moving in three on three. Aliferov drops it. One timer and a stick save by Schofield on the shot by Bugliosi. Taken here by Ethan Abraham. Digs his way to the corner, back behind the cage. Abraham, back to the point for Ramon, but he cannot control it, so he'll chase it back. 4.50 to go in the third. Ramon's got two. Pass up ahead, intercepted by Gross. Taken back by Shen. Shen gets free. Four on three into the zone. Shen drags and fires. That's blocked. And clear to the neutral zone. Ramon tries to backhand it along, deflect it over to Shen, and Shen dumps it. Lifted right back out towards the St. Joe's bench. Neil Kadahi trying to move in. Kicks through one, but not through the other as Bugliosi knocks it away. Still battling those. He gets knocked down. Penalty coming up against Penn. They touch. It'll be a tripping call. So St. Joe's looking back on this game, no matter what, they're going to look at the power play, and that's close to the difference in this game. Again, they gave up two shorties. This will be their eighth power play. And you know that the St. Joe's coaching staff over the next few weeks before their next game, they got something they got to work on, especially avoiding the shorthanded rush. And two shorthanded goals for the Penn Quakers. 
Even one is too many. Two is just not the way you want to do it. So here's Aiden Amali to slam it around. Kept alive by Brazil. Brazil spins against the check. Now draws the double team and it's cleared. Well, give credit where credit is due as far as the penalty kill for the Penn Quakers as well. Simply because they know how to pursue. And they keep in the box, but then when they recognize that play may transition the other way, they pounce. And see, here's Borman back behind the cage. Near side for Brazil. Dangerous move in front of his own goal, but got through. Brazil lifts it in deep. Coming back is Amali. Winds it around the boards and is able to clear. 3.30 to go in the third. 1.10 remaining in the power play for the Hawks. So stopping behind the cage, Shane Wilson out of the Quakers Hockey Club. Really no rush here in spite of the fact that St. Joe's needs a goal a minute at this point. Near side for Kadahi. Angle pass ahead, intercepted by Houston, and he'll clear it right back down. Wilson around now for Fiore. He'll have some room on the near side. Fiore digs. Wants to avoid the check of Tui, they just lost it. Tui dangled through some traffic. He slowed down by Masanova. Uh, killed some serious time there. Good poke check by Shen. Shen trying to break free and does. Coming in short, hit a three on two, takes a shot and it's deflected wide. Near side, Fiore. Taken out on the flexion after Flag moves out. Flag, one on three, gets through one. Good stick check on him by Trevor Kanji. Five seconds to go in the St. Joe's power play. Penn is able to clear the line, not out. Wilson throws it across into the skates, throws it out in front, deflection, and unable to get the shot on goal was Corey Long. There goes the power play for St. Joe's. They are 0 for 8 as here moving in on a break is Bugliosi. Oh, what a save by Schofield. It was dumped all the way down off the boards, and uh, Schofield, rather, Bugliosi got there first and turned it into a glorious opportunity. Under two minutes left to go in a 6-3 matchup led by the Penn Quakers. They've controlled this game pretty much from the beginning. Some good pushback throughout from St. Joe's, but missing some finish as this is dumped all the way down and icing called against the Hawks. So just continuing my thoughts on the power play for St. Joe's, 0 for 8 as they took two shots on their last power play. So 0 for 8 with nine shots in total. And of course, the big number is giving up the two shorthanded goals. So you get rid of the two shorthanded goals given up and the power play goal given up, we're a 3-3 game. Basically, five on five, this is a 3-3 game. Certainly something that St. Joe's can kind of put in their pocket. But certainly know that they have to improve on uh, special teams play. Again, first game, there's always something to improve upon. What do we got here? There's only four out there for St. Joe's. So they rectify that. And referee says, no, it's not going to be Ryan Manns or Frederick Roughgarden. I think he changed his mind, realizing, okay, they only have five. It's a minute 34 left. Let's, let's move on. So here's a lift for off behind the net. He's cut off. Moving through here, Shane Wilson. Bats it up ahead. Kept alive there by Amali. Drops it off. Now for Bugliosi. Dumps it in deep. 80 seconds remaining. Nice dangle move here from Abraham. The shot up the crossbar. Uh, referee emphatically says no. As here's Houston. The pass it across. One-time try, and that goes wide by Oliferov. Taken by Abraham. Abraham spins with 103 to go. Backhands towards the slot, and it's kicked wide. Taken here by Oliferov, and it goes in. With 56 seconds left, it's 7-3 Quakers as they put the exclamation point on this one. Looks like it is going to be Chris Bugliosi to get the goal. It's his first of the season. An all-around good effort here from the Penn Quakers on opening night.
And Christopher Schofield has faced a ton of shots. He's made 39 saves. But he's been in some duress. The shot comes in at the line, doesn't go. The opportunity from Tui. It snuck past Schofield, but they played it off the line. Referee lost sight with 41 points, actually 46.1 to go. So we take a look at that last goal. Abraham able to dangle through some traffic. Dumped out in front and a beautiful pass there for Bugliosi. Back to live action with 45.5 to go. They took a couple extra tenths of seconds off. And we got a player down here for Penn. It's Zach Kian. Did not see what happened. Referees will, and the linesmen will all get together. Basically, the question will be, did you see anything? And he is up, and he'll skate off after some words for the official. Maybe he did get hit. 40.9 to go. And because of the injury, they move the draw outside the zone. Griffin Bond against Eric Ford, a couple of number eights. As this is bunted down by Shen, right back into the zone, Jacob Kian. He'll try a shot, and that goes high. All the way around it comes, kept alive by Ramon, but can't keep it. Two on two the other way as here comes Ryan Manns. Manns goes to his backhand. Good poke check by Kevin Shen. 23 seconds left to go. Back to the point. Shot comes in by Hirschman. That's blocked. Back behind the cage. Ramon goes to the near side corner. Tries to clear out. Kept alive there. 10 seconds remaining. So last second battles here on the near side half boards. It rolls to the corner with three seconds left. And that will do it. Penn Quakers, an opening night victory over the St. Joe's Hawks. Final score of 7-3. So Penn 1-0, St. Joe's 0-1. Next up for St. Joe's will be on October 8th against Ryder. Next for Penn, a week from today here at the Class of 23 against Stockton. For all of us here at the Class of 23 Arena in Philadelphia, this is Tom Wilms saying, saying thanks for joining us. And we'll see you real soon. Again, final score, Penn 7, St. Joe's 3.